Good morning guys, we're back at it again with another video. All right, this is a concept that Liam and I have been playing with over the last probably three or four months. We've been going over concept designs of creating a portable solar generator. Now why this thing is gonna be really badass and it could be really applicable to your situation is that we're gonna be building essentially a very small solar system on a movable trailer. So this would be perfect if you're moving to an undeveloped piece of land and you're gonna be living in your RV temporarily until maybe you build your main residence. Um, I'm sure you could think of some other applications as well. With that in mind, you can provide yourself with either temporary, possibly even permanent power. Um, what's really good about this, and this is the whole idea behind it, is that all the money that you put into the solar components, for example, the panels, the batteries, the inverter, the charge controller, all those components, if you pick the right ones, you could most certainly use them for a future solar system, a more permanent solar system. So what's really nice with solar systems is that you can scale them up to a larger size. So on this trailer, we're gonna be mounting six panels. I think they're gonna be about 300 watts. But in the future, so we're building this for my neighbor Brian, in the future, if he wants to do a system with either 12 panels, 15 panels, he'll be able to do that. And then if he wants to scale up the batteries, he can do that as well. So we're gonna be using two 24 volt, 5.3 kilowatt hour um, Tesla Model S modules. And we're gonna be putting two of those in there. So that's gonna give him 10.6 kilowatt hours of storage of usable storage, that's gonna be about 7.5 to eight kilowatt hours. Now, if he wants to in the future, when he builds his more permanent system, he can upgrade that um, and add two more battery modules to get himself up to about 20, uh, 21 kilowatt hours, which is approximately exactly how much I have. So essentially what we're gonna be doing here is building my solar system only using six panels and only using about half the battery storage. So that allows you to kind of get your feet wet with solar and not have to make um, the biggest investment right at the start. So I know panels are expensive, batteries are expensive. So if we can cut that cost down to less than half for those components, then um, it's a little bit easier to kind of get started with this, uh, with doing a solar system. So in here, we're just gonna be putting the same charge controller that I have. So the MPPT150 slash 60 Schneider one. Um, we're also gonna be putting in the same uh, Schneider 4000 watt or four kilowatt inverter. Um, if four kilowatts is not gonna be enough for your future solar side of what's really nice is that you can scale it up and you can double the inverters to give you um, basically eight kilowatts of continuous voltage which can surge up to probably close to 10 kilowatts for, for a very short period of time. So this is a really exciting concept and instead of thinking I have to run a generator and I'm gonna have to run that generator for months, possibly years. Once you start to factor in the cost of gasoline over that time, Something like this makes way more sense if you save up and then you purchase all the components, build it yourself. So gasoline, when we're running our generator, it costs anywhere between five to $10 a day. So if you extrapolate that over 365 days over the course of a year, that could be between 2,500 to possibly over $3,000. So that's a lot of money that you're just essentially throwing away. But what is so great about this is that the components on the inside um, they're not temporary components. You can use them for a bigger, more permanent system. You shouldn't really need permit for this because it's on a trailer. It's the same way of you know, building a tiny house on a trailer is that you don't need um, building permits or anything like that for it. So I think unless you're, you, the county that you're building in is kind of being you know, a dick, you should be able to do this pretty well anywhere because it's on a trailer, it's movable, so it is not a permanent structure and you should essentially be able to park this anywhere and provide yourself with clean, quiet 
power. If you've ever had to live on a generator for an extended period of time, it is loud, noisy, dirty, it sucks. It's just a crappy situation. So with the sizing of the panels and the battery bank, Brian and Pam should be able to run their air conditioning all throughout the day and possibly for a good amount during the nighttime as well. And uh, they'll be able to run all their electrical cooking appliances and they should be good to go. All right, I'm ready to get started. The hardest part of this is not doing the wiring or anything like that, is uh, figuring out a way of racking and mounting the panels to the trailer, and that's what we're gonna get started on. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about everything because we're still trying to you know, figure this out. We've drawn this out on diagrams, but we, uh, we're not exactly sure how everything is gonna fit together. All right, let's get started. Who's this guy here? Who's this guy? <laughs> this is... This is Liam. So we're working on getting the first set of racking done here, and it is looking real nice. So we'll, we'll be able to fit two panels right down here, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be real nice. Nice, lower that down. Oh yeah. Look at that baby. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that panel tilt right there, guys. We just figured this out using, you know, stuff that you can buy at a retail store. Boom. Good morning, good morning guys, we're back at it again. Day two of the solar generator build. So we were very successful yesterday with getting everything racked. How did we do? Awesome, we did great. Awesome. So today we're gonna be working on wiring everything up and then coming inside and we're gonna be mounting charge controller, inverter, um, the midnight solar um, e-panel I think it's called and then the batteries on this wall here So it'll kind of act as a bit of a counterweight to the panels being on this side here and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling So 
So a lot of the components for this are going to look similar to our system. So we're using the same Schneider charge controller, same inverter. Instead of using the Schneider switch gear box, we use the Midnight panel or Midnight Solar e-panel. And then we're using Model S batteries and putting this together today. So we've got all the hard stuff done. We've got all the solar panels. We've done all the, we ran all the PV wires to the other side to the combiner box. Um, and today's kind of a gravy day, but it is extremely windy and uh, very cold. So we'll, uh, we'll try to get her done. Uh, Liam is mounting the Model S batteries. So we just used some two by fours and then just uh, we, uh, cut, a little, cut a little slit in there for the battery tabs, or for these tabs, because there's only holes on one side of the batteries. So this is actually a really slick way of mounting these batteries yeah. right to the wall here. Nice and tight. How's that bus bar looking? It's looking real nice. Always, when working with batteries and metal tools, watch where your wrench end is swinging, so as it doesn't short something out and blow up in your face, because that's not fun. So, let's oh, see, we're making perfect contact, nice and flush. We'll snug it down for now, and then we'll uh, get the torque wrench out and torque it up. All right, guys, we did it. We finished the first version of the solar generator that we've been working on for at least the last few months we've been designing and yep. thinking about uh, planning, uh, going back and forth, adjusting the design, a lot yeah. of work. <laughs> um, we should have actually finished this fully yesterday, but we're actually having an issue with the fuse. So uh, <laughs> what was going on is that, um, actually you can explain that you better to, explain? to me. Okay, yeah. so, so uh, in place over here, just underneath the inverter, we've got uh, a class T fuse which Schneider recommends for safety and is probably a good idea to have as well. Um, although we also have a breaker up there, which is the, the main disconnect. Um, but so what's happening is because the inverter was new, uh, it has a large capacitor bank on the uh, input. And so when you first apply the battery, because it's empty, uh, because of the way uh, capacitors behave, in this case, basically it appears to the batteries as if there's a short across the load. Once the capacitors charge up, everything stabilizes, but that large initial surge of current trying to fill that large capacitance um, basically made it look like there was a short to the fuse because the fuse is sensitive enough that it's going to trip uh, rather quickly. Uh, I forget what the time delay on the class T is, but it's, it's, very, it's very quick. And so what was happening was we went through the first fuse, we had that, we flipped the breaker, nothing came on. And we checked the fuse and it's shorted. We said, okay, well, so let's try another one. We try another one, uh, that doesn't work. We tried a third one, that also tripped. And so the first two were 110 amp, which is the minimum that Schneider recommends and is really kind of a, a safe value given the maximum power output of the inverter. But that does not account for the fact that you need that initial surge when the <laughs> inverter is new. Now, once they're charged, it will not do that again. Um, but it's that, that first startup, uh, you know, depending on depending on temperature, how fast they'll charge, mm. voltage of the batteries. There's there's a whole bunch of factors that that play into that, um, and so because of that, we were like, oh, we must have a fault somewhere. We we pulled apart everything, we disconnected everything, we reconnected everything. We were testing and poking and prying, and we were like, oh, we must have a bad inverter. It, there must be something wrong, and so finally, at about the end of the day. This realization dawned, ah, uh, it's new. Well, maybe that could be doing it, but, but the fuse is the right value, isn't it? So what we did was we just, um, we actually still have, we need to work on that, but we need to buy some more fuses. We used up all our fuses. Uh, we just put a piece of copper bus bar in place to just short it out. And then are relying on the disconnect slash breaker, um, which mm -hmm. that trips at about 220 amps or so, 219. Um, the other thing is it's got a, a slightly longer time delay before it will actually trip. Uh, mm -hmm. So we had a little bit more leeway and sure enough, well, we have some footage of actually us turning it on, which will be interesting, but we'll show that right now. Didn't we? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So last words? Should we, should we say <laughs> fire in the words? hole? Or is that preempting something? I see a fan.
Oh my god, that, that was it! it! The fan is spinning. That was it! Son of a Mother LEDs? Is the fan still- Oh yeah, it's inverted! No! Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so if you've seen the footage, uh, you'll know we uh, we turned that on and everything worked because that allowed enough current to actually flow to fill the capacitor bank. And then once it charged, the inverter clicked on and the fans were to life and lights blinked and then we were able to press it on and it worked. And, we're and good so to go. we were we were very we were elated, I think is a good word. For Absolutely. That. Yeah. And slightly uh, and immensely pissed off at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so the sizing of this, so we've got 10 kilowatt hours we've got of uh, battery capacity and then we've got a 4 kilowatt continuous inverter. So you can run multiple power tools. Brian's going to be running his RV off of this. There should be enough um, solar, um, we should be able to get enough solar energy throughout the day in order to run his air conditioner in his RV. Yeah. So there should be enough there. And, and, and everything else is inside and, the RV. Yeah, and everything else as yeah. well. I mean, I mean, worst, worst case scenario in the winter time, uh, based on the spreadsheets that I've got, the minimum you're going to be collecting is at least seven kilowatt hours a day. In the summertime, you could be seeing in peaks of 10 kilowatt hours. I mean, basically it's going to be, uh, your batteries will probably be full before noon and it will be how much, how much of that solar can you use during the day to just power yeah. your loads. I mean, your batteries will be charged. That's a given. And then you're just basically using the solar as you need it during the day. And then the batteries really only have to get you through you know, sundown till sunrise, which is not that long. I mean, in, in your system, you use 20% of the battery overnight. Yeah. And then, and then it's fully charged by, by like 10 or 11 most days. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the batteries are really just a buffer. You're really kind of running on solar power. So what we're going to be doing with the solar generators is we are going to make a video, like a very comprehensive step-by-step -step video course showing you how to do this because there are some differences between this and kind of like a regular solar setup. And then we're actually going to be building these and selling them or renting them as well um, because they're going to serve a tremendous purpose for um, a lot of people. So Brian's on his way over. They've been running on a generator for the last, um, I think, month and a half or two months. They're actually using my old generator, and uh, they are going to be so happy <laughs> when this is when this is in place and it's just silent. It works. Clean, wow. silent power. That's, that's beautiful. The best. Actually, I think I think Brian might be here. The dogs are barking. And also check out Liam has his Off Grid Solar Basics course. So if you want to start learning about solar yep. from, I think one of the best sources out there. Um, easily the best source out there that I've seen. Um, definitely check it out and start learning about this type of stuff so that you're going to be educated on it. So you kind of know what's going on here. And uh, then you're going to be a much more capable individual. It's not magic, it's science, kids. Yeah, and you can do a lot with solar. A lot of things that you don't think that you can do, you can probably do with it. Yeah. So I feel somewhat like Clark you, Griswold in, in, in Christmas in, Vacation. In, engage <laughs> Plugging the, in the Christmas in, lights, so here we go. Engage the safety squares. Are you guys ready for this? Cue the fireworks. Oh God. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta we did it! Real All right, nice. let's go turn something on, make sure it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you oh. see your little lights are on there. Oh yeah, they're on already! Oh, we've already got something. We've got lights. we got something. They're plugged in all the time. Uh, how about the microwave? Yeah, you can Ooh, turn the your microwave, microwave on. Uh, oh, look, it's got a lot. Look at that. The microwave is working. Microwave works. That's a huge, that's going to be one of the biggest draws in the that house right there. Amazing. And uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Talk to you soon. Come go. on, peace. Oh, peace. <laughs>